Okay, so welcome to your second online geometry summer course. I'm Mr. Marquez and I am your facilitator throughout this entire process. And I may not be your favorite math teacher now, but I'm pretty sure that by the end of the summer, I will be. So let's get started. Um, today's class is gonna be short and sweet, guys. So we're still working on our math sharpeners. Uh, they say going to um, 10th grade um, and we are going to continue to reinforce some of the concepts of Algebra 1. So you're going to see that the first couple of days, the online geometry course is going to focus mainly on, um, uh, at least this week, on Algebra. Next week, we're going to start seeing more of the geometry concepts. Um, on Friday, this Friday, I will um, upload a video giving some instructions on your first quiz and when they're going to be and when it's going to be and how we're going to be doing it. So keep um, stay posted for that. Guys, that being said, um, let's get started with this. Today we're going to see proportions and we're going to find, it says finding a slope from a graph. Now, finding a slope from a graph, what I want to do when I get to that part is simply to explain to you guys um, what slope or to identify whether a slope is positive, negative, or so on and so forth. So proportions. Proportions are a way of work. They're kind of a combination of fractions and equations. One thing about a proportion is that a proportion um, is an equivalent fraction. For example, um, one half is equivalent to two fourths because if I multiply one times two, I get two, and two times two, I get four. So a proportion is, is an equivalent fraction some proportions are very easy to solve. Some proportions you can solve them mentally. Others you're going to use cross multiplication, which is the method we're going to see here for these next three examples. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write this one over here. Okay, so let's look at the let's look at the first problem. It says six over fifteen equals x over twenty. So the cross multiplication method basically just means you're going to multiply, for example, 20 times 6, which is 120, and 15 times x, which is 15. So you, you say 6 times 20 is 120, and 15 times x is 15x. And what you're going to do now is to find the value of x, just divide by 15. And this is going to cancel out. And 120 by 15. Um, so we can say, let's look, at it. let's look at it. So I think to myself, let's say, let's pick a number like nine. And I'll say nine times five is 45, but I can't use it, it'll be bigger. So let's say six. Six times five is 30, I carry the three. Six times one is six, plus three is nine, so that would be 90, and this would be 30. And I would say 2 and 2 times 5 is 30. So my answer would be 62. Okay. Now you can always check your answer by plugging in the results. Um, again, 6 times 5 is 30. 0, carry the 3. 6 times 1 is 6. And 3 is, um, 6 times 1 is 6 and 3 is 9. 120 minus 90 is 30. 15 times 2 is 30. So we say here that x equals 15. Okay, very simple. Now we're going to do the next one. We're, this one you can do mentally, but we're going to go ahead and continue to use the cross multiplication method. And we have 6x times 12, which is 12x, and 6 times 4, which is 24. And we're going to divide by 12 on both sides. And x is going to equal two, um, 2. Pardon me, 2. And that's it for that. Uh, exercise and then we're going to do the last proportion. So have you seen it's all been cross multiplication. 6 times 20 is 120. Um, 15 times x is 15x and you simply divide um, 15 on both sides and that would be um, 62. So here there's a mistake. I just realized I wrote 15 instead of 62. So x equals 62. And then you can do the same thing on this side. And you're going to cross cancel or cross multiply x times 12, which is 12x, 6 times 4, which is 24, divide by 12 on both sides, x equals 2. And now I'm going to see the last proportion. Now the last proportion has variables and it can look a little tricky. I'm going to step out of camera just to make sure that the equipment is working perfectly. Um, so you're going to multiply, cross multiply the same way you did. Okay? So you're going to say 
x times 30 is 30x. And then you have 20 times x plus 1. So you're going to say equals 20 times x plus 1. So 20 times x is... So you're going to say 20 times x plus 1. Okay? So 30 times x is 30x. 20 times x plus 1, I use the distributive property, which means 20 times x is 20x. And 20 times 1 is 20. And I have 30x equals 20. Now I have a, an equation with variables on both sides. And you saw this in your, you've seen this in your algebra class. So all you're going to do now is just subtract 20 on both sides. So this would be minus 20x minus 20x. This is going to go ahead and cancel out. 30x minus 20 is 10x. And you have 10x equals 20. And divide by 10. And x equals 2. So you have different types of proportions. That proportion you saw an equation. Let me go ahead and recap that one real quick just in case someone feels like their head is spinning and didn't understand what I said and I spoke too fast because sometimes I tend to speak too fast and it's hard for people to understand me so I'm going to go ahead and slow down. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply x times 30 and that's where I get the 30x from. Then you're going to multiply 20 times x plus 1 which is what I have here and you multiply 20 times x which is 20x. And then you multiply 20 times 1, which is 20. And you have 30x equals 20x plus 20. So I combine my like terms, which is my x in this case, and I subtract 20 on both sides. This cancels out. 30x minus 20x is 10x, and you bring down the 20. So 10x equals 20, and divide by 10 on both sides, and x equals 2. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for working with proportions. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So I can do the last example of this video, and then I'm going to assign the work that you're going to be doing for today, and tomorrow I will be uploading another video. So here we go. Let me erase this real quick, and let's go to finding the slope. Now, <clears throat> the way that you see them in your math sharpener, they don't really give you a ordered pairs or anything like that. So what you're really just going to do is just kind of determine if the slope is positive, if it's negative, if it's constant, if it's undefined. So far, uh, so what we're going to talk about, when we talk about slope, um, if we were going to see it in physical terms, it's a slope is kind of like when you have a ramp. So this is a, an example of a slope, if you want to see uh, an example of it in the real world. Let's say you're going up a ramp. The slope is just like that diagonal distance. The slope is kind of like that diagonal distance, right? That's what we would say a slope is if you were looking at it in terms of the real world. Now, you, we're only going to see slopes of linear functions, and you're going to see some exercises in your math sharpener that um, have the graphs. And in those exercises, all I need you to do is identify if they're positive, if they're negative, if they're constant or undefined. But let's take a, look, a closer look at that. So a slope, you have to think about a slope in terms of going up an escalator or down an escalator. If you've been to airports or if you've been to those big, big malls, you see that they have escalators going up and escalators going down. And if you're in the airport and you have like that little walk, moving sidewalk where it goes in a straight line. So those are, you have to think about those kind of things in order to relate to what I'm trying to say here. So a slope is positive if it's going up the escalator. Now slope is always represented with the letter M and we're going to talk a little bit later about that. And we say that M is positive. Right? because the slope is moving upward. Now, if, if we're doing the opposite, if you're going down the escalator, then it would be the exact opposite of that, guys. It would be the exact opposite, which means that the M is negative. M is negative because it's going downward. Now, if you, like again, like I was mentioning the, the little ramp thing or that they have in the airport that kind of moves this way. So if the slope of a line is like this, we say that that is constant. And it just means that in this case, the value of our m, which is our slope, is always going to be zero. And when it's like a vertical line, let's like say you were literally climbing up a ladder, we call this slope undefined, okay? And we when it's undefined, we say that m is over 0. Now, whenever you have a fraction, your denominator cannot be a 0. So that's why we say it's undefined. So you're going to see problems like this in your math sharpener. And all I want you to do is just like identify. Is m positive? Is m negative? Is m constant? Is m undefined? 
So guys, that's it for this class. Tomorrow I'll be uploading your other class. Um, when you're done watching this video, when you're done reviewing, when you're done um, doing everything you need, I want you to go to your math sharpeners and you're going to go to week two and you're going to answer problems. Um, when you get to week two, you're going to do the problem to say day one and day two. So again, math sharpener, week two, day one, week two, day two. And that's it for this class. I'll see you tomorrow with your next class. And of course, this is, I know it's only been two days, but I'm pretty sure I already am your um, favorite math teacher. So see you guys soon. Bye.